smoother. Here we go. Twin powered Adam RC Dolphin number two. If you haven't watched the first video, watch the first video. That'll get you up to speed to where we're at. I got all my parts and pieces, links below. And let's get on with the show. Right, everyone we got dolphin twin motor tractor version 2 so what have we changed well we've changed a couple of things um, number one we've added some washers right here it's gonna be hard for my camera to focus but we've added some washers uh, right here and what that's doing is that's taking the motor and it's actually taking the motor and it's tilted it down that's adjusting what's called the thrust angle I think the reason it was oscillating and it wanted to climb so bad is just because the motors were pitched high, so it was just wanting to shoot it up into the sky. I just did two washers on each side. If we gotta do more, we will. We'll find out momentarily. So that's turned the thrust angle down. The next thing that I've done um, is, as you can see, my battery is sitting very far back. I had this setup done on my first Dolphin. It does not affect structural integrity at all. I actually, my first one, I slammed it in the ground and it actually broke this whole wood piece and everything and didn't even mess with that. So don't worry about cutting into that. Um, it would be nice if they just came from the factory with a bigger, bigger opening right there, but it is what it is. So I'm gonna show you a video of how I got this opened up. But what this allows me to do, this, this allows me to take my Z battery pack and what I can do now is, I'm gonna do this one handed, is I can slide that son, son of a gun all the way back there. And it's got a nice tight fit, uh, just like I did up here by using this little piece of foam to kind of keep this battery from shifting. I will probably put something here or figure out a way just to double check to secure it. Um, that way in case some high maneuvering. And then we'll turn this thing around to the back. And as you can see, it's pretty much that little hole on the very bottom, that's where the uh, crossbar goes through, the wing spar, it's all the way back. I went ahead and the two holes on the left and the right, uh, right here and right here is where I'm gonna pass my power wire through and then the rest of my communication, all my cables for my camera and all that stuff. Because if I decide to fly this without the, uh, the twin setup and go back to this regular pusher, I can still move my battery I want to be able to run the power cable up there. It'll just make life easy. Now, wondering how I did this? Let me show you. So how we do this is with a soldering iron. Get yourself a cheap, just freaking piece of junk soldering iron that you're only going to use for this. And pretty much what you do is you go and you just touch it and it just melts. It just kind of like, kind of like dissolves. And you just take your time. You go all the way around. This is a piece of cake. Um, I actually took, see if I can get this to focus here. Mine had a pointed end on it and I just went ahead and flipped the uh, pointed end around and uh, just used the blunt end. But that's what I've been doing. I've been, I've been back here taking my time doing all that. Just gotta be careful. Anything you touch with foam, it's gonna freaking just dissolve it. But uh, that's what I did. So now, let's get this put back together and check the center of gravity. All right, now you've seen that. Um, I just use this piece of foam right here. This thing fits in there very snugly. Uh, it, honestly, I, I don't even think I would need this, uh, but I just have it in there to keep everything um, uh, secured. I didn't, you know, I only went back so far with it. I don't know if you can even see in there, uh, but there's no way this battery can slide back. This is as far back as it can be. I, I did run my wiring through the side. I made little vents for it um, to run the wiring so it's not rubbing against the battery, no chafing or anything like that. And you obviously can tell too that I now have my rear motor hooked, um, installed on the back. I have it on there on the back for two reasons. Number one, if I ever wanna switch back, all I gotta do is unplug these. I got an extra set of wings over there and I can simply plug in this to one of these and the uh, the uh, the communication wires and I'm and I can swap it back. I don't got to unsolder, put something back in. Uh, very much a piece of cake. 
I have an old prop. I put an old prop and I just kind of snipped the blades off of it and put this nut on there. I did that just to protect this in case it comes down ass hard onto the ground because you know I street land. Uh, I also have this little vent cover that I put on the ESC. It's not really there to protect the vent, to, to add cooling. It is there as a skid. Um, especially if I land in dirt or anything else, it keeps the ESC off the ground, out of grass, if I'd have to do that, or mud or whatever. And it also helps um, act as a skid and prevent the back of this from hitting the ground and touching the motor bell. So that's just all protection. Uh, flip this back over here without dropping it. There we go. Uh, underneath again, same old, same old. Uh, these are, I do have my 6S ESCs from Adam RC. And it's got the wiring all ran in there like it should, a little zip tie on there. And again, I think this looks cool because it kind of looks like it's got uh, Ram jets on it. This is gonna provide plenty of cooling. That way, if I run these things hard, I don't gotta worry about them overheating, they're getting airflow, and that's it. And there we go, kiddos. So, that is the setup. We're gonna take it out and fly it. I wanted to do this video first in case she just grenades and blows up into a million pieces. And then um, also, these, like I said, these ESCs have a um, UART lead, and I got one for, I've got one for each ESC, so I can read the motor RPM and then I can also read the ESC temperature. Now I think I'm just gonna, I have it set up, but it's only showing one. Don't know which one it's gonna give me, how that's gonna work. But as long as I got one, that gives me an idea, and that's it. So we're gonna fly this, and then we'll come back and we'll talk. Alrighty, we're out here again today. I'm behind my car, because it's blowing 15, 20 mile an hour winds again, but that's gonna pretty much be the same it was as the first time, so we'll see if something changes. We'll go in the car, I'll just show you from outside here the launch. Oh, way smoother. All righty, everyone can see, there we go. Okay, so I'm, now I'm flying into the wind. I'm at 58, I'm at 50% throttle and it's pulling about 10 amps, going about 30 mile an hour. I'm in angle. I'm going to put this thing in acro. I'm just kind of flying it right now. I'm trying to get, um, if you have in your settings, um, continuously trim servos, whenever you make a change, just let the thing fly in uh, stabilize mode and like acro or angle. And right now the plane is doing everything it can to figure out where it needs to fly nice and level. All right, seems like it's doing a pretty good job. Of course, it is windy as shit. Okay, so I'm in angle. I'm gonna put it in manual, and we're just gonna see how she does in manual. That's gonna tell us a whole lot. We're gonna try to get some height too. We're getting ready to go flying into the wind here. I'm gonna stab it, and let's just see what happens. Oh yeah, she does not climb like before. She climbs a hair. I mean, she's climbing a hair, but that could just be the wind. Uh, let's take it out and we'll put it in angle and I'm gonna stab it, 100%. Oh, she did good. So, washers definitely fixed it. That was an easy fix. Let's take a look at each wing. Looks good. Looks good. All right, we're gonna go back into manual. Um, you know, that was another thing that I had noticed too, when I was trying to fly inverted, it wanted to pull itself down. And that was probably due to the, the, um, the thrust angle. So we're going to do the same thing again. We're going to fly inverted. Oh yes. Flies inverted a thousand times better. So efficiency wise, it's going to be a hard one to do a test on. Um, again, it seems like at 50% throttle. I'm pulling right at nine amps, 10 amps. Now I'm going with the wind. I'm going into the wind, excuse me. Let's turn this thing and let's go Let's go with the wind. Yeah, 50%, it's about 10 amps, 10 amps. No big deal. Oh, dudes, 
that thrust angle modification made a huge difference. Um, made a huge difference. That was it. Um, center of gravity uh, feels good. She turns decent. She doesn't feel too heavy at all either. Oh, yeah, guys. I think this is going to be it. Um, let's go ahead and we'll just... You know what? Let's go to cruise. Whoop. It ain't liking that. I think we got to do an auto. We got to do an auto tune. I think that's all there's left. We got to... We got to do an auto tune, get those PIDs adjusted for where the, um, since the flight controller has moved, but launching it and flying it, thousand times better. Of course, it's also windy as shit. I got my 4S battery in, and of course, you know what's going to be up next. My 6S is actually going to be here today. And I'm in manual mode. I'm not flying stabilized. I'm just going to try to not hit the car. Just flew that right overhead. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. Um, ooh, you know what? We're going to test one last thing. We're going to test the ESC brake. Ooh, my battery voltage is getting low. So here's how we're going to test the ESC brake. We're going to do that. Kill the throttle. Oh, it stops it. Good. Uh-oh. Come on out. Turn. Turn the camera. Freaked out for a second. Oh, yeah. That ESC brake was working nice. Okay. I'm about to run out of battery here. I didn't have my battery charged all the way. It was in storage mode since we were on vacation. Um, I'm going to try to put this thing into just angle. There we go. See, she's a little, she's a little hoppy. We'll go back into manual. Give this thing a good turn. There we go. All right. Gonna bring the throttle down. I wonder if acro I wonder if I leave it in acro. I think acro might just be the best mode. God, it's that wind, dude. I'm like pretty much having to just. It is so much. Uh oh. No, let's go get it. Yeah. Okay, back in the car here. Uh, everything's good. It is freaking windy. I bet you it's blowing over 20 mile an hour right now. I'm gonna grab some grass. Later, dude. It's windy. All right. Oh, let's get back in the car. So. Let's get back to the homestead. We'll go over the flight. All right, got the plane back. This plane flies a thousand times better now. Um, changed a couple of things. Of course, we added the uh, shims to the uh, to the motor mount. We adjusted that thrust angle. Uh, I think that's pretty much what did it. Um, didn't want to climb under high throttle, flew nice, would fly inverted. You know, that's kind of a nice telltale. If you're flying, of course, center of gravity, you can throw that off. But if your center of gravity is right, you flip the plane over to fly inverted. And it can't it can't climb inverted. That might be a good indication of your uh, your thrust angle. And you could probably have the same adjustment here on the back, too, as well, for all you single engine guys. But anyway, we did that. Um, sliding the battery back. Uh, we are getting there, guys. Uh, all my INAV PIDs, I didn't change anything, so we're not going to go over that. You can look at video number one when we get a nice day, and I can do an auto-tune and tune this thing. We'll have a third or fourth video wherever we're at in the sequence. What you're going to see next is today, I'll be getting my 6S battery. Again, remember, I designed this, set this setup for 6S. Yes, it does work on 4S. But it's kind of a high KV motor. Again, the F60, 1950 KV. If you were wanting to stay on 4S, I would possibly say getting the 2306, honestly like the stock, um, the stock motors that come on a Swordfish. And I might just order some and just do a video on that. You know, just something fun to do. Compare both. Uh, but you're gonna be seeing a 6S video coming next after this. Then after the 6S is done, it feels good. 
I'm gonna try, and we're gonna use this third engine, and we're gonna have an afterburner that will only kick on at a certain throttle. I think I can do this. Again, I've only been doing this for a year, guys, but this is a blast. I love it. I don't mind sending it so you don't have to. And after all of that, we're gonna go to and try and configure a tail center. So I can sit there and hover it like this. We're gonna try. All in iNav 7.1 and uh, we'll go through it. So again, if you have any questions, type them up. I try to get to them and I do have a life. Uh, other than that, I think that's it. Thank you for watching. We'll see you on the next dolphin video. Remember, go through my channel. I got all kinds of dolphin videos, all kinds of setups, all the stuff that I've done in my plane. It's all there. So take care. See you in the next one. Bye.